Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I thought I'd go, um, give you a flip through of my large Dina Wakeley journal. I've got halfway through, so I thought I'd let you see what I've got inside. Um, the cover, for those people who are wondering, are all printables from Little Raven Ink from her Patreon site. Um, she does beautiful mic making and collage pages, so I like having her beautiful images on the front of my journal just to inspire me to sort of put colour in. So the story behind this journal is I won this two years ago um, as part of the mixed media, uh, Dina Wakeley Mixed Media Tribe Challenge that's on the Facebook group. And when I got it, it was later announced that Dina was coming to Australia for classes. So I thought, oh, I could use this as my class book. Um, so I was very lucky to get Dina to sign up. And um, I've got all the class notes and so on, and all the class practice things glued into this book. So it's a little bit different from the other journals I've got. Um, but obviously, I haven't done those classes in a while, so I need to fill up the extra spaces. So I've been going around and playing it. This is the first page I actually did before I did any of this, uh, just playing around with the size of it. And I've struggled with the size of this journal, which I didn't actually think I would, but it is so much bigger than I'm used to working with and I think it's because it doesn't quite fit in my desk so I don't have the same movement with it. Um, that sort of restricts me more than I thought it would. But when I was doing this page, one thing I loved about it is I could use those really big magazine images and actually have them look um, in proportion on the pages. So uh, this page, again, I've got a video on at least two years ago now, uh, on how to use collage images, uh, tissue paper and stamping on your own tissue paper and using lots of texture paste on it. And this is a page I've only just done, which was the background, you can see the texture paste on, was done at the same time as this and it's been sitting there and sitting there and really bugging me. So um, I finally just slapped some paint on it and um, came up with this page. Here are some of the, the class samples that I'm talking about. So um, just sticking in the little faces and the abstracts, this is from the Ordered Chaos class I did. Um, you just tore them up. And this little tag um, was my daughter Aoife made this um, with um, in Dina's class. Because my kids were so little, they had to come with me and my mum, very kindly for my 40th birthday, came over with me so I could actually do these classes but as repayment I let, um, sent mum to one of the classes which was the abstract flower one and we went to pick her up and um, Aoife went in and did some finger painted flowers so that had to be in my journal and um, yeah she got to hang out with Dina Wakely too which was lovely. So this is another page um, using the um, the abstract painting in the background and then doing the redactive painting. So that was my sort of first playing around and for those people who have followed my journal for a long time now know that this is a, a favourite technique of mine. I love doing this redactive painting and having something interesting in the background. So this is where my love of that came from. This page again was sitting in this journal. I finished this yesterday I think and it's been bugging me the whole time. I because when you're working in class you don't necessarily get the colours that you want to work with and because you're working wet and it hasn't got time to dry things are mixing into each other so it was really sort of getting into muddy colours and I just thought nah just leave that and when I was working last night I just thought oh why not um, do some splats on top of it so this is splats of um, night the gloss spray and putting the tissue collage tissue over it and I just finished this page off and tied it all together so sometimes things can wait for the perfect products to come along to help you out um, these two pages were pages I did in the hotel room um, the nights after my classes and it was based on a video at the time by Little Raven Inc Courtney Diaz and this monster was sort of sitting there. It was in bright neon pink because I only had neon paints to do this. And again, it didn't have, uh, it had the canvas background and it was just really bugging me. So um, I played around with my distress crayons last night to put some more shading into it and um, darkened off the edges. And it looks more finished now than it had done. So a lot of the pages in here were sort of just half finished, which I don't tend to do very often. And yeah. Coming back and finishing them off really helped. This is another class that we did with Dina, which was called Tell Your Story, which is all about making sure you journal. 
so that was lots of fun. Um, these were pages inspired by what I've done in the class of Dina. So they're ones I did after I came home, inspired by some of the techniques, just to again practice. I like coming home and practicing what I've learned in classes because that's where you, you can use your own materials and get really comfortable with what you're doing. This page was inspired by the um, fig figuratively speaking online class by Dina Wakeley. Um, talking about how to draw figures and stuff. I um, had fun playing with gold leaf in this too. There is a video on how this page went together um, which I'll link to as well. Uh, this again is another one based on the figuratively speaking and my interpretation of the class lesson and um, what I came up with. So I really liked having the collage tissues in the figure of the body. These are some of the really quick class samples we did for um, Dina and this activity was she gave us four words and we had five minutes to just draw something so this is wild dance dance alone and family and this piece here was um, one of the other abstracts that we had to do. So we had a whole heap of time just to do really abstract pieces and then we went back and reworked over the top of them. So you'll see bits torn out like this. So this is another um, abstract that you can see and then class notes underneath. So washi tape is really great for putting tip-ins like this. This is another page that I've actually just finished that's been really bugging me. I actually put on the Dina Wakeley site the blank burlap I had the hole cut out of it going what do I do this page I really don't know I ended up just putting some black washi around just to frame it and a word on each side to sort of frame it in which I actually really love um, the simplicity of it it's not something I would usually do but it works I think in this but if anyone else has got any other suggestions please let me know so I like the fact that I could sort of frame both um, pieces at the same time this is where I started to go off the beaten track somewhat where I had this journal I wasn't doing much with it so I decided that I would do some mic making so this is a video that's up on my channel as well um, using a big stencil and doing some colouring pencil over the top. This is a piece I did again probably two years ago and it was based on a abstract mic making video inspiration from Amber K Creative who you can follow on YouTube as well um, just having lots of fun making marks in the background and using lots of different materials and particularly using ink which again I don't tend to use very often um, in my artwork I better show you the original actually so because it was done in classes this kind of jumps around a little bit and um, this is the class that um, I did when I was with Dina Wakeley, which was um, looking at having windows. So tearing out a window of your book and just doing a four page spread. And she talks about repetition and lots in it. So I, this is a page I did in class. And as I said before, I like to come home and practice. So I, this is a page I did inspired by the class. And the thing that I wanted to play around with was actually using it as a window and putting some tracing paper. Um, in the window so you kind of see through it but it's it's shaded so just taking what you learn in class and sort of flipping it a little bit um, and I really liked how it turned out and I actually really love the crinkly sound of the paper um, gold bits behind there are the packing from watercolors that I unpacked so anything can end up in your journal and be used this is again some class work from the figuratively speaking class using some shapes from magazines to draw out large figures and that's where this journal sort of comes into its own because you can use the full sized figures from magazines to actually get a really great shape. Um, this is some more class work based on that. Um, this again is like the um, redactive painting you saw earlier so just playing around with that with the bright colors in the background uh, sort of from now on it it's sort of gone out of that I still kind of wanted to keep this very Dina Wakely ish journal um, but I think 
I find when I box myself into a journal, I fight against it and do other stuff in it. So I, I find just going with the flow and being gentle with myself is a good way to go. So I created this page. This was a kind of use up page too. If I'm doing gel printing and stuff, um, putting my roller in here is good because it's a bigger surface that I can clean it off on. So this is um, magazine image from... I think a Teen Breve or a Frankie magazine and just sort of extending the image um, using your own mic making. Um, this is using the classes on um, figuratively speaking again. That's the class piece that you saw before. And this is where I sort of went off the rails somewhat. So um, I have really enjoyed doing the magazine collages in here because again as I said before having the large images just really works and particularly when you're doing something completely out of proportion it just works in something bigger. The other thing or the reason why these pages were done I don't know if you can see in the background I had the large ranger gel plate that I'd done a um, gel print print into my journal which I really liked but it had this border around it which just wasn't working for me so I came up with the idea of putting an actual border around it to sort of frame that and then putting the magazine collage in as well and it worked for me so um, I was happy with how that ended up so um, same on this page you can see the gel print in the background and um, doing the magazine collage on this page this is inspired by Laura Mixed Media on Instagram. She does have a YouTube account too. She put up this beautiful um, piece of work that she did using this sort of colour scheme and, and design shape which I really loved and I wanted to kind of replicate it because I really loved how the colours went together and I loved her really bold use of the black through it. Mine's didn't quite work. Um, it certainly looks nothing like hers but it was a really great experiment to have and from doing that I now know what I would do differently in the future so um, you know obviously reference who you are, are inspired by that's really important but have a if you see something you like have a go at it if you see a color scheme you like have a go at it because you might love that color scheme or you might go no that really doesn't work for me um, you know, fuchsia is my favourite colour and I knew that was the colour that she used in hers but actually on this page I'm not sure if it's my favourite, you know, combination of how it goes. So just learning all those little things about it um, really worked. The other thing I really loved about this page was the bold white writing on it. So um, doing that really helped. And it's, again, I tend to go for the thin pens. I never grab my thicker pens. So that was something else that I took away from that page. Excuse me. Um, this page was again a really quick abstract in the background and then using the stenciled images over the top. S this is similar to a page I did in the blue journal and I was finding uh, it was really easy to work on the denim. I really loved doing that so I wanted to do it again a similar piece on the canvas um, because I tend to paint over the whole canvas um, this one I deliberately actually left some of the raw canvas showing so um, again just trying new things and, and experimenting. This page I did earlier last year um, it was inspired by the artist Sarah Trump and there is a video of how this was done. Um, again I chose this journal to do it in because I wanted a really large strange figure um, and it was just the perfect size and because it is odd and out of proportion it works in it. I think having it smaller may throw the proportions out somewhat so that was a fun technique to do and using a colour I don't tend to use a lot. I don't use greens very often so again challenging myself to do something out of the normal. Uh, I also wanted to try doing a lace cut page in here. Um, because I love doing them um, and I thought having a larger page I could actually start writing some quotes which again is something I love to do but on the smaller journals it's a little bit harder you can sort of do a word or two words but you can actually write a full quote so I really love this quote she was fragile she wasn't fragile like a flower she was fragile like a bomb and then just did the, the lace cut around with just some really simple colors in the background this is a page I did for um, my Scrap FX design team. 
we got these beautiful rice papers with large images on it and again because it was a large face I wanted to put it in something that was larger so having the large journal has been really good for things like that even though it's a challenge to use and I struggle with using it sometimes sometimes it is actually just the perfect size to work in um, and it particularly work with this one of my bugbears about this page when I did it was I'd stuck down this quote before I finished doing the picture which for me is actually a really strange thing to do it's usually the last thing I do and it really bugged me because I actually once I did this it really reminded me of the artist Roy Lichtenstein and I found one of his quotes um, to put as a thought bubble kind of like his his images do so having that um, quote there just didn't quite work with it this is a page I did for a um, Aussie YouTube hop last year and it'll be in my YouTube hop um, videos based on a color scheme of blue red yellow green and play I think it was kind of like a scrapbooking <laughs> mood board and um, but I went art journaling with it because that's what I do and I really loved how it turned out this is the last page that I've done in this journal so it started out in the background as um, me cleaning off my large gel plate and it looked really really ugly and I added a load of collage over it which you can sort of see here and I really liked it and then I decided to do the images over the top and again I just cut them out of a magazine so these are the images I used um, and you can see you can use sort of the large images and you can extend them up to make them fit onto the page. The only thing that really bugged me was I chose this one, which makes sense when you actually see her clothing, how it fits together. But when you do this, she kind of looks a bit blobbish without any hands in it, but it all works. Um, so I had strong women, may we know them, may we be them, may we raise them, which is an important thing to to focus on. I talked about some of the strong people I know and why I want to, my kids to be strong too. So that is my journal at the moment. I have still got quite a lot to go. I do have a confession that I did actually cut out some of the burlap. I've only cut out one burlap page out of this, this half of the journal because I just couldn't face using another burlap page in here. Um, <clears throat> but I'll try not to do that in the next session. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you. If you've got a large journal to have a go at it, it is, I totally get you, it's really challenging to use sometimes, but for some occasions it's the perfect size. Until next time, bye for now.